All right. Uh, thanks for inviting me. Uh, I'm the uh, I trace now for some, about a year and a half, I think. And uh, you know, in the beginning, we were kind of a little bit skeptical about how all this is going to work. But I'll tell you that we use it on every um, cataract and refractive patient uh, that I see, um, and it's really gotten to the point now where I. I I don't think I could operate without it. I mean, I, I see it's so much useful information. And I think I've barely scratched the surface of what I'm getting back out of the machine. So I'm here to learn as well, but uh, Ray and the team asked me to just kind of give a, uh, an interesting case. Um, so one of the you know, questions that we always get asked is, you know, why is this useful? What are we going to use abirometry for in your office? And uh, one of the, probably the first time that I heard about this uh, was a talk that uh, Kevin Miller gave probably like I don't know how many years ago five years ago or so and he was talking about he had a way to figure out what makes unhappy multifocal patients unhappy and so that's when I started getting interested more and in talking to him about it so we found that the eye trace is really a, a useful tool to help us identify where the problem lies because we can isolate as we said corneal irregularities as well as internal irregularities and, you know, in my practice, I get a lot of referrals from other uh, doctors and unhappy patients. So this has really been great for us. So what we think is, um, you know, we can kind of clarify a little bit of what patients are complaining about to a scientific sort of uh, physical uh, optical property. And, and when patients typically complain about blur or double vision, most of the time they're going to have some induced coma. If they're talking about glare and halos and, and difficulty seeing at night, that's typically spherical aberration and starburst is usually a trefoil pattern. And we can kind of see this in our, our, our wafer analysis uh, that we get with our uh, eye trace. So this is a case that I had uh, of a 62-year-old lady. She had undergone cataract surgery with a multifocal implant in one eye, the left eye. And really, since day one, she was complaining of really bad vision. Um, and she had gone through multiple, of course, visits with her doctor, and then she got second and third, and I think that was the, probably the fourth opinion she got, and she had a little bit of a PCO, and she had best corrective vision of 2040, but just bitterly complains that her vision is just not good. And so, you know, thankfully the surgeon didn't do a YAG because that, we'll find, was not necessarily the answer. So we put her on the eye trace, and I'm just gonna show you the left eye here, the uh, corneal, uh, this is the Chang display, of course, but the corneal uh, irregularities are very minimal. And this is a fairly normal, you know, looking cornea with low amount of corneal anterior astigmatism and all the indices look great. If you look at the total, you see so much more. You see a lot of coma, you see a lot of spherical aberration, and it's really not coming from the cornea. It's all coming from the internal numbers here. And so if you look at the uh, simulation, which I think this is a great tool, not only for us to understand what's going on, but to show the patients what's going on. And I think we, uh, the, other, the other speaker mentioned that as well, that it's a fantastic patient education tool. And so if we look here, you see the corneal uh, map, and this is the uh, E. Uh, Snellen equivalent of what the patient might see. And this is very intuitive for patients to see, okay, yeah, my cornea looks pretty good. But then when you look at the internal aberrations, you have this. And you know, I think, I don't think I have all the different things you can do with that image and kind of figure out where exactly the, the aberrations are, but suffice it to say, we can isolate it to this. Now, one of the things we thought about is, could this uh, be caused, let me ask everyone here who has a lot more experience than me, could this be caused by the, the posterior capsule pacification alone? You said, you say no, it's, it, it's probably, and, and this is a mild, PCO, she had 2040 vision, so it wasn't a dense, scarred PCO, but you wouldn't expect a small PCO to have. And, and actually, I should probably do this now that I think about it, is just take some eye traces of patients who are pre-YAG and maybe look at that. Has anyone done any kind of studies on that? Because that would kind of help us decide, well, does this patient need a YAG? Does this patient need an IOL exchange? What I went with was that the patient complained really from day one with really bad problems. and. It was a well done surgery, it was, the lens was centered, there were no other major you know, issues, no tilt. And so I said, this is probably not capsule opacification causing this much irregularity. And so then we did an eye oil exchange. It was over a year out, so it was a little you know, tricky, but everything went well, there were no issues. And so this is the post after about, I think it was after about a month or so, I don't know. But I mean, dramatic, 
dramatic. The cornea stayed fairly much, pretty much the same, but just look what happened in the internal aberrations and the overall aberrations. Tremendous, tremendous improvement. And this is what the snow one looked like. So, and again, this, she's not had a yak yet. So I think we can say that it wasn't the posterior capsule. Um, but I'd like to maybe look at that maybe in greater detail or, you know, there's so many, I mean, you'll see so many different ideas coming out of this uh, meeting. So, uh, you know, all these things will hopefully guide us a little bit more as to how we can analyze this data and use it and help us guide us in making our clinical decisions. Um, so uh, again, uh, you know, we can also use this to identify candidates for premium lens as, as uh, Dr. Mark talked about for the um, uh, alpha, uh, angle alpha and angle kappa. We can determine if significant corneal aberrations are present. Maybe patients would not be a good candidate for multifocal lenses. And so we, I have a few other cases we can talk about later, but it's very, very easy to take someone and put them on the eye trace and say, hey, you know what? I think you have a lot of corneal irregularity and a cataract. Maybe a multifocal lens isn't the best for you, or maybe your angle kappa is above 300 or, or, or whatever our cutoff we're gonna use. So uh, the possibilities with this device are really uh, limitless. And so I'm really, uh, on the early stage of this learning curve, and I look forward to learning more from you all. But thank you very much for inviting me here.